Good evening, everyone. My name is Todd Bloniers, along with cameraman and BHS sports producer extraordinaire Jeremy Meserve. Belmont coming into tonight's game with a 3-3 three and three overall record, 2-1 and one in Liberty Division play, and currently riding a two-game winning streak with back-to-back -back division wins against Winchester and Lexington. The former played here at Harris Field two weeks ago, ending in exciting fashion, and a broadcast here courtesy of BHS Sports TV. Marauders win that game 32-30. Marauders followed up that fantastic finish with an impressive 35-20 triumph at Lexington last week, and that has suddenly put Coach Brian McRae's squad into MIAA playoff positioning if they can win either tonight or next week at Woburn. In the latest Division II power rankings released by the MIAA this week, the Marauders ranked 21st out of 34 eligible schools based on their margin of victory strength of schedule. Top 16 schools qualify for the statewide playoffs that will begin next month, or more precisely, two weeks from this weekend. And they'll conclude in early December with the uh, high school Super Bowls being played at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough and I think maybe some other venues as well. The Marauders will be receiving the opening kickoff. I believe Arlington won the toss and deferred. So they'll be kicking off. They're wearing their road white jerseys with the maroon numerals splashed on the uh, front. They are moving from left to right here in the opening first quarter. Marauders in their normal home maroon jerseys with the white numerals. And of course, moving from right to left here for the first 12 minutes. Here's the kickoff underway on senior night. The ball takes a high bounce and it'll be retrieved over on the far side of the field. I believe that's uh, Lassiter, Austin Lassiter, and he'll get tackled, not making it quite to the 15 yard line. So Marauders will take over first and 10. As we said, it is senior night. Uh, not a very big senior class this year for the Marauders, which of course bodes well for the future of the Belmont program with a lot of these players coming back next year. But the five seniors were honored uh, along with uh, all the senior cheerleaders. Uh, prior to the start of the game, the five senior players, uh, four of them being captains, uh, the one lone non-captain is Alex Colello. And then the four captains, Chris Cogliano, Jake Cornelius, Ben William, and Asa Rosenmeyer. Unfortunately, Cornelius, uh, Jake Cornelius will not be playing tonight. Uh, he is out with uh, some kind of lower body injury. I believe he had a brace on his uh, right leg. So here's Arno in the offense on first and 10, and Jaden Arno will throw it out to the flat. And the pass is caught, and it will be positive yardage for the Marauders on the, uh, the first down play and their first offensive play. And that was Adrian Garung, who was coming off a huge game last week at Lexington, running for over 200 yards. As again, the Marauders were victorious by a final of 35 to 20. Garung, uh, 202 yards on 20 carries and also scored three touchdowns. Trying to build on that, and the Marauders looking for their third win in a row. Here comes Cogliano now, who caught the game-winning touchdown pass two weeks ago, and he'll uh, take the handoff from Jaden Arno and will be short of the first down on a second and eight play. But he does gain some positive yardage, so it'll be third and less than eight once they uh, reset the chains. And they didn't move them very far, so maybe a gain of a yard, we'll call it third and seven. Marauders need to get to their own 23 to pick up a first down. And right now it's Jaden Arno in the shotgun. And uh, there's a little pressure from the Spy Ponders, and now Jaden will take off, and he'll pick up the first down, running to the near side, tackled out of bounds, but not before the junior quarterback and also the lone captain on the team who is not a senior. Quarterback Jaden Arno, who's been really coming on like gangbusters the last couple of weeks, picking up the first down with his legs. And the Marauders will keep the drive going. Belmont Marching Band, of course, giving you the, the victory march. The song, of course, that they play when the players uh, are introduced at the beginning of the game and the shortened version for the first down. Pass incomplete, the intended receiver, Brian Logan, Jr., in and out of Logan's hands, so it'll be second down and 10. So like we said, Marauders are in. Thinking there's a problem with the clock. Well, they, they started at 12. I, yeah, the clock says we've only played 48 seconds of actual game time. Feels like it might be a little more than that. Meanwhile, here's Garung on second and 10. Running to the right side, he'll get tackled for a gain of maybe a couple. Makes his way close to the 35-yard line. Once again, it's going to be third and long coming up for Belmont. 
So as we said, Marauders have won two in a row. Beating Winchester, the game we brought to you on BHS Sports TV a couple weeks ago. An exciting come from behind 32-30 to 30 win for the Marauders as uh, Jaden Arno hooked up with Chris Cogliano, the two captains, combining for a 33-yard touchdown pass, which is 15 seconds remaining as the Marauders uh, came back and won that game. And then last week, very impressive outing at Lexington, winning by a couple of touchdowns. Here's Arno on third down. He comes to the near side. Pass is caught by Cogliano, who breaks the tackle. And as a result, he'll get a first down into Arlington territory at the 48-yard line. Well, that ball looked like it was kind of up for grabs. Cogliano pulled it down, similar to the, uh, the pass uh, that Jaden Arno connected with him at two weeks ago here against Winchester. And Cogliano, when he caught the ball, was short of first down yardage, but he did a nice job making a spin move, eluding the tackler and picking up the first. So the ball spotted now at the Arlington 49-yard line, first and 10, Jaden Arno in the shotgun. And the clock is running officially or unofficially. We've played two minutes here in the opening quarter. Here comes Cogliano in motion. Fake handoff to him, it goes to Adrian Garung on first and 10, and he is brought down and uh, credit there goes to Arlington's big number 71, Will French. I don't think he's related to the French family of Belmont. But he might be. Maybe he's a cousin. I don't know. Cousin from cross town, from the other town. Uh, Will French is only a freshman, but uh, certainly doesn't look like one out there on the field. He managed to slow Garung down for no gain. So it'll be second and 10 upcoming. Marauders offense has started strong each of their last two games. The game at Lexington last week, Marauders scored a pair of first quarter touchdowns and actually had a 20 to nothing lead before Lexington finally got on the board. And the team's basically traded touchdowns from there. This time Arno is going to keep it himself and there goes the rugby scrum trying to, <laughs> chain and Arno being pushed forward, I think maybe by a teammate. Seriously, it almost looked like for a moment like Jaden Arno was being hoisted up on someone's shoulders and brought down the field like in a, a celebratory fashion. That not the case, however, and of course forward progress, uh, they stopped that one at the 46. So we got third and seven here for Belmont. Their third, third down on this drive. Already two for two converting on these third and long plays. Let's see if Jaden Arno and the offense can do it once again. In the shotgun. Jaden is looking deep downfield. He's got Logan, and Logan makes the catch! Tight coverage, but Logan was able to make the catch. Number 23, Nico Trapatsis for Arlington never turned around to look for the ball, and that may have been the key. And Logan makes the catch for a big gain. They'll spot that one down near the 15-yard line. Gain of over 30 yards, and Jaden Arno once again is off to a red hot start. First and 10, spotting it at the 18. Uh, it'll be a fake handoff to Garung, and Jaden's going to keep that one himself. Gets to about the 15 yard line, or checked at the 10 yard line. And uh, that might have been the most yards the Rodders have picked up so far on a first down play on this opening drive. A gain of six for quarterback Jaden Arno, junior co-captain. This time he land off to Garung on second down. And Adrian Garung has a first down close to the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Marauders from there. Very impressive drive here by the Marauders. It started inside their own 15-yard line. Of course, that game-winning drive the Marauders had two weeks ago against Winchester, that uh, drive started at their one-yard line. Marauders went 99 yards for the game-winning score against the Red and Black. Here's Garung on first and goal. That time met at the line of scrimmage. Second and goal upcoming. Marauders a three and three, as we said, two and one in Liberty Division play. While Arlington two and four, and yet they, they've yet to win a game inside the division at 0 and three. They've had some pretty tough matchups. They've played, uh, they played both Reading and Woburn in the uh, amongst their uh, divisional games. Second and goal, Arno. He's hit as he throws the ball. It's up for grabs. It's going to be intercepted. I believe that's number ten, Gaspard Pennard, a junior. 
but really the credit goes to the pass rusher who managed to get to Jaden Arno and hit him just as he was throwing the ball, causing the pass to just flutter up in the air. And there were three white jerseys waiting for that one to come down. No Belmont receiver in the area and a very tough turnover for the Marauders. It comes with 6.31 to go here in the opening quarter. So Arlington will take over at their own 14 yard line. Following the interception by Pennard and the, uh, the return. Jack Schiano, number 15, senior quarterback for the Spy Ponders. And he is in the shotgun with two receivers split to each side and a man in motion, but there's a bad snap! And that is gonna roll all the way out of the end zone and be a safety. So the Marauders can't score a touchdown on their opening drive, but their defense gets two points. Or maybe I should say that was courtesy of the Arlington long snapper as that snap was well over the head of Shiano. And Belmont will take it with 5.21 to go here in the first quarter. Belmont two, Arlington nothing. I always love announcing those scores in football. It's like, okay, who hit the home run? Are we playing we play baseball here or something? Or I suppose we could also be talking Belmont hockey, except it's uh, not quite cold enough uh, for the uh, field to freeze over. But the Marauders do score the game's first points. They lead 2-0 and will have a free kick upcoming from Arlington. So Belmont's offense will again take the field. So the, so the Belmont defense was only out there for one play. They will be well rested. <laughs> the, the ball goes back to quarterback Jaden Arno in the offensive unit. Beautiful evening here uh, for uh, we uh, get into late October. Sun just setting uh, moments ago. And we have temperatures uh, got up into the uh, mid-60s this afternoon. Probably about 10 degrees cooler right now, but just a perfect night for football. Here comes the free kick from the, uh, from the 20, and that one takes a couple of high bounces, but friendly bounces, goes right into the hands of Belmont's number 25, Miles Torres. Torres is still on his feet, still going, and he'll be tackled at the Belmont 41. So the interception and the turnover by the Marauders on their first offensive drive uh, thankfully does not come back to hurt them. And the Arlington miscue on the poor snap to quarterback Jake Schiano ends up resulting in a Belmont safety and a 2-0 lead with under five and a half minutes to go here in the opening quarter. We believe the clock was fixed because I think I saw the time go from like, there's like a whole minute like was shaved off the clock as I glanced over there. So I think uh, the... I think the timekeeper got things straightened out on the scoreboard. So I think that time is now accurate. Anyway, it's first and 10 Belmont at the 41 yard line. Jaden Arno calling out signals. He's got two receivers uh, split to each side. Adrian Garung is flanked to his right. And here's the snap and Jaden Arno's looking. There's some pressure and he'll step up in the pocket and now he'll take off. Jaden Arno going. Jaden Arno's got a first down and a little bit more into Arlington territory. Another good run by the junior quarterback and co-captain Jaden Arno. First and 10 for the Marauders at the Arlington 47 yard line. Offense picking up where it left off on the, uh, the previous drive. Again, Arno, uh, we got three receivers this time split to the near side. Closest to us is number four, Brian Logan. Cagliano uh, in the slot closest to the left tackle. And calling signals, it's gonna be a handoff to Adrian Garung and Garung plowing forward. There's going to be a flag thrown in. In the area where you'd expect uh, the call to probably be offensive holding, but let's uh, get a confirmation from the official. Our referee this evening. And he does say holding 
on the offense. There we go. I was actually reading an article uh, in the Boston Globe earlier this week from uh, Michael Silverman, longtime uh, writer for both the Herald and the Globe, and one of the things he talked about um, was that uh, there is a uh, major shortage of uh, high school officials uh, across the state of Massachusetts, particularly in Eastern Mass, and as a result, a lot of games have been moved around the schedule, whereas uh, everyone would usually play on Friday nights. Now there's been some Thursday and Saturday games on the schedule. Uh, here's Garung on the first and 20. Looks like about first and 20. He'll get a couple of yards. But uh, Silverman was uh, talking about the fact that, uh, you know, it's been, uh, there's been several reasons for this, uh, uh, for the uh, lack of game officials, I guess, uh, Due to, of course, COVID over the past couple of years, there's been a lot of early retirement by some of the older game officials, also not enough younger officials, and also later start times that have been preventing the junior varsity and varsity uh, teams to both play on the same day. It's kind of spreading the officials thin, and uh, I have a follow-up to that in a moment. Here's a long pass downfield. It is broken up, intended for Garung. Looks like they were trying the wheel play where the running back goes out deep for a pass. And that was a pretty nice looking pass from Jaden Arno, but there was also some good coverage down there and they were able to break it up before it got into the hands of Adrian Garung. I mentioned all the thing about the official shortage because if you were uh, watching our last uh, BHS Sports TV broadcast, the Belmont Winchester football game, I, I kind of want to uh, apologize a little bit for uh, some of the things I was saying about the officials. There was a, a lot of strange calls in that game and I kind of had myself scratching my head and at times I may have said some things uh, about the officials that were not very nice, and I think having read this article in the Globe this week, I'm starting to get a better understanding that, uh, you know, there, there's fewer officials out there um, that have been able to work these games, and as a result, they can't always be in perfect position to make the calls, and, you know, there's also a lot of rule changes going on, so it's not easy. I, you know, I probably want to stress that. Pass to Cogliano. That pass wasn't easy, as uh, Jaden Arno was looking for Chris Cogliano, but the throw was a little bit high on third and 18. And so uh, because of the holding penalty, Marauders kind of got set back on that drive, uh, forcing them into a uh, long series, and uh, they are not able to convert on those two pass plays. So it's going to be fourth down, and Belmont will have to punt with 3.44 to go here in the opening quarter. According to the MIAA, uh, this was again from the, uh, the Michael Silverman Globe story, number of on-field football officials dropped um, has dropped 16% between the fall of 2018 and this year. Apparently though, uh, the uh, official shortages have been hurting all high school sports because if you uh, include all other sports, uh, the uh, droppage is 23% over the last four years. A lot of that uh, uh, had was largely due to COVID. Here's a uh, line drive punt will be returned by the Spy Ponders up to uh, about their 40 yard line. Always well, tough to see uh, on the far side of the field who's returning that punt. It looked like a single digit. Might have been their senior uh, wide receiver who could be acting as a return man, Jacob Kerbel, number six. But anyway, as I said, I you know kind of felt a little bad after the broadcast about some of the things I was saying about the officials. And I, I think when you realize, again, it's just... You know, they're doing the best job they can, and uh, I know sometimes the fans, uh, the article went on to also talk about the how uh, fans uh, have also kind of driven some of these officials away because they uh, tend to get a lot of verbal abuse. They can hear it from the stands, and frankly, some of these officials just don't think it's worth the aggravation. I can understand that, too. Here's a first down run by number eight of the Spy Potters. That would be Caden Mills. He might have actually been the one uh, returning that punt. He'll pick up... Uh, about two or three yards on that first down handoff from quarterback Jack Giano. First positive yardage offensive play for Arlington. Of course, only their second offensive play uh, so far in this game. So we're closing in on three minutes to go here in the first quarter. Caden Mills, number 80, is a junior running back. And in fact, uh, now head coach Matt O'Loughlin of the Spy Ponders. He's in his third season coaching Arlington. A 7-14 overall record. He'll call timeout. It comes with 3.03 to go here in the opening quarter. And again, the score, Belmont 2, Arlington nothing. On the safety. 
Those of you who don't watch a lot of football, a safety can be scored by the defense or is credited to the defense as a defensive score. Sometimes the defensive team will uh, sack the quarterback or tackle a running back in the end zone, the, the, the offense's own end zone. That results in a two-point safety. In this case, there was a uh, snap uh, that went uh, over the head of Arlington quarterback Jake Schiano. He went back and fell on it. Uh, actually, he fell on it back in the end zone. So had he actually tried to kick the ball out of the end zone, which you sometimes see with bad snaps, that would have also been a safety. If the ball goes through the team's offensive end zone while they're on or their own end zone while they're on offense, that's two a safety. Did you get all that? There's going to be a quiz later. Second down, and Caden Mills will take the handoff once again from Shiano and pick up a few more yards. It looks like third and three is upcoming for Arlington at their own 48-yard line. Uh, while the Marauders are... Uh, Hot right now, having won their last two games, Arlington trying to bounce back. Uh, they played Reading last week. They hosted Reading, and uh, Reading looked more like the hosts in that game as they uh, won by a score of 55 to seven. Of course, Marauders played Reading earlier this year and lost 35-7 up at uh, Reading High School. Here's a third down play. Shadow's gonna keep it himself, but Brian Logan is there. And uh, Brian Logan, we you know, uh, a couple weeks ago in that game against Winchester, I was calling Logan's number quite a bit on defense. Uh, Logan, of course, is a wide receiver for the Marauders on offense. The junior also plays defensive end at 6'5", 180. And he really does a good job, uh, what we've seen here in the games at Harris Field, getting to the quarterback as he's playing his defensive end position. So a nice play there. Turns into a sack as it was te technically a credit for a sack. Shiano tried to run, but it was a tackle for loss. That, my friends, is a sack. <laughs> so credit Logan for the sack. It's fourth down. There's a uh, another kind of looping snap, but uh, it gets to the punter, Marcus Bierne, and he'll uh, get it away. Everyone will stay away from it, and it's going to roll all the way down to the Belmont, about the 22-yard line before it's down. We now have a minute 29 to go in the first quarter, and the Belmont offense will take the field for their third offensive series of the game, already up 2-0. Again, that safety really set up by, of course, the Marauders took the opening drive from their own 15, got all the way down inside Arlington's uh, five-yard line, a goal-to-go situation. Unfortunately, Jaden Arno was hit as he tried to pass the ball into the end zone. The ball fluttered in the air. It was intercepted by uh, Gaspard Pinard of Arlington. But then on the very first offensive play for the Spy Ponders, the uh, snap to quarterback Jake Shiano sailed over his head. And uh, Shiano fell on in the end zone where he was tackled for a Belmont safety. So here we go. First and 10. Garung, nice move as he finds the hole, sneaks through, and Adrian Garung. Oh, except, well, hang on. The ball popped loose. We've got some Arlington players signaling fumble and in fact it did pop loose because they are saying it is Arlington football the second turnover by the Marauders here in the first quarter and it sets up Arlington with their best field position of the game thus far at the Belmont 36 yard line well Adrian Garung got through the initial line there was a nice hole that he managed to work his way through and he had first he had the first down then there was kind of a few defenders around him. Didn't really see what happened, but the ball apparently popped loose. And Arlington was able to recover. Shiano uh, on a quarterback keeper. And he'll pick up a yard as we approach the final minute of the opening quarter. So Arlington with the ball and looking to uh, take the lead as Belmont is up 2-0 here. Shiano goes to head coach Matt O'Laughlin uh, for the play. Again, just two weeks left in the regular season schedule. Marauders, this is their final regular season home game at Harris Field. Next week, Marauders will travel to Woburn to play uh, Tanner's team that is, uh, well, their usual uh, solid selves. Here's a uh, Second down handoff to number eight, Caden Mills. Mills seems to be their primary running back. And Mills picks up uh, about three, maybe four yards. We'll say three. Called third and six for Arlington. Ball spotted at the 38-yard line. Or third and five, they're calling it. 
kind of looking where it's spotted. Yeah, it's... Well, we'll have a little more time to uh, look that over as we've reached the end of the first quarter here at Harris Field. With the score, Belmont 2 and Arlington nothing. you are watching Marauder Football, courtesy of BHS Sports TV. Once again, my name is Todd Bloniers, being joined uh, with, by Jeremy Mazur. Welcome back, Jeremy. Good to see you. Back in his normal uh, cameraman post, also uh, audio coordinator. We like to call him the executive producer of BHS Sports TV. By the way, I'd like to mention at this time that BHS Sports TV is supported by the work of volunteers like myself and staff members like Jeremy Mazur. But we need you to be a video volunteer. There's a lot of sports to cover here at Belmont High School, and you know it can't all be covered uh, by uh, Mr. Mazur as hard as he tries. So please consider volunteering by contacting Julie DeStefano by email. You can contact her at access at belmontmedia.org. Of course, you can always contact the Belmont Media Center directly at 617-484-2443 during uh, regular business hours and uh, you can get trained on how to work the equipment. If you'd like to run a camera or maybe you'd like to be like me. If you're someone with a lot of hot air to uh, expound on, uh, you could be an announcer like myself perhaps. Uh, here's a uh, third down carry. Again, that looked like it was Caden Mills and Mills has uh, got the first down. See how easy that is. Ryan Halloran uh, was there for the Marauders to make the tackle, but not before Mills picked up. And Arlington first down at the Belmont, inside the Belmont 25-yard line. I think they're going to officially spot it at the 24. As we begin play here in quarter number two. Shiano's going to roll out to the right. He's looking, looking. He'll fire. Pass is caught. It's going to be good for another Arlington first down. On the far side of the field. Looks like, I think that's Gaspard Pernard. It might be number 10 again. It was Pernard who had the earlier interception um, for the Spy Ponder defense. He'll now line up over in the uh, left slot. This time, uh, Shiano once again is going to keep it himself. He runs to the left. He's got positive yardage. And uh, he will be closing in on another Arlington first down. Arlington can... Uh, Get a first down without scoring if they can get the ball inside the four-yard line without getting a, a touchdown. It's kind of a quick snap there. I think uh, Gianna was trying to catch the Belmont defense uh, a step behind, and it paid off as uh, Gianna picked up uh, about six yards on that first down QB keeper. He's under center right now. It's second and four. He'll hand off to Caden Mills. Mills goes to the right side. Mills is down close to the goal line, and he is into the end zone for a Arlington touchdown. That's going to be an eight-yard TD run for number eight, Caden Mills of the Arlington Spy Ponders. Comes with ten and a half minutes to go here in the first half. It will be number 10, Gaspar Pernard, who in this game already has an interception. And he has a pass reception. And right now, he's about to attempt an extra point. The multi-talented Gaspar Pernard. And that kick by Pernard is up and good. So the teams will head back upfield. Ten and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter with the score now Arlington 7 and Belmont too. And really the difference in this game so far has been the turnovers. Marauders were so close to scoring a touchdown on their opening drive. Except that Jaden Arno was hit as he released the ball and it was intercepted in the end zone by Gasper Pernard and the Spy Ponder defense. That ended up leading to Belmont's only points. Uh, the safety uh, coming up on the uh, first offensive play for Arlington. And then on the, of course, the last Belmont offensive drive, the uh, Grung fumble 
leading to a short drive for Arlington that started around the Belmont uh, 36. And uh, they were able to take it home, ending that drive with an eight yard Caden Mills touchdown run. And that has you caught up, but uh, really right now those turnovers making the difference. Because to this point, it certainly feels like the Belmont offense uh, has been the star of this game. They've been moving down the field, but the turnovers, as any uh, any football coach, any football fan, anybody who's ever experienced any aspect of football will tell you, uh, turnovers are really the great equalizer. You can dominate a game, or you think you're dominating a game, and you look up on the scoreboard and you're behind, and it's probably because you couldn't hold on to the football. Here's a squib kick by Arlington, onside kick attempt, and... Well, it went 10 yards, and Arlington's claiming they fell on it. Let's see what the call is on the field. I thought I saw a Marauder fall on the ball. I believe they did. Here comes yeah, the Belmont offense is coming back out on the field. I think that's the Belmont offense. Hold on a second. Hang on, we're having a discussion here. No, actually, no, it's, uh, it was recovered by Belmont because uh, right now Jaden Arno is talking to his head coach, Brian McRae. McCray in his second season coaching Belmont varsity football. has a 7-10 and 10 overall record. And in fact, they are uh, calling Arlington for a penalty, illegal touching. Apparently, somebody on the Spy Ponders touched that onside kick before it went the necessary 10 yards. Of course, the rules with the onside kicks, uh, similar both in high school and in the, uh, if you watch uh, the NFL on Sundays or even college football on Saturdays, uh, again, the ball has to travel 10 yards on an onside kick before the kicking team can recover it. That ball did actually go beyond 10 yards, but apparently before it got there, it was uh, touched. So it's a five yard penalty to Boots. So not only does Belmont, uh, well, Belmont gets the ball and they get five yards added on. So they start this drive at the Arlington 44. First and 10. Quarterback Jaden Arno in the shotgun, and he will hand it off to Garung. Garung running once again. Another strong run by Adrian Garung. He's going to be close to a first down, this time holding on to the football very tightly. And he'll be close to first down yardage. We mentioned uh, Garung, the junior running back. Ran 20 times for 202 yards last week against Lexington. And uh, Marauders were victorious in that game, 35 to 20. Garung in the first quarter alone scored on touchdown runs of 45 and five yards. Then he had a three yard run in the third quarter. Again, 202 yards. Rushing, uh, just 20 carries, so pretty good average for Garung. Here's Garung again with a big hole. Adrian Garung first down and a whole lot more. We knew coming into the season how good Adrian Garung was and has been here in 2022. As he rumbles for a Marauder first down. Boy, is this Marauder offense looking sharp in the last three weeks. Garung leading the running attack. Of course, you got Jaden Arno who can also uh, run pretty effectively out of the QB position. And then when he's not running, Arno uh, finding his big, tall, lanky receivers and picking up first downs. First and 10, Belmont at the Arlington 25 yard line. Again, it, it's actually this time a fake to Garung, and Jaden will keep it himself. Garung was ahead of him trying to throw a block, and Jaden Arno picking up some pretty decent yardage. He'll call it a gain of uh, about five, close to five. Jaden Arno, who uh, last week against Lexington had, uh, well, let's see, I'm looking really quick here. He actually had a rushing touchdown. And here's a, another run. And there's Garung again with the keeper this time, or the handoff from Jaden Arno. And he'll pick up a first down. Belmont offense has been very effective so far. First and 10 at the Arlington 11 yard line. So the Marauders can pick up a first without scoring a touchdown. Quick handoff to Garung. Garung, big hole. Adrian Garung to the house. Touchdown, Marauders. Adrian Garung, 11 yards to Pater. It's his fourth touchdown in the last two weeks. And Belmont takes the lead 8-7 with 8-14 to go here in the second quarter. 
and the extra point pending. Great job by the Belmont offensive line. Ryan Halloran in there, Max Cornelius among others. Helping to spring Garung for the 11-yard TD run. Number 20, Austin Lasseter is in to attempt the extra point. Isaiah Arsvalon will hold. He's the backup QB. And uh, Austin Lasseter's extra point up and good. We did not see Austin Lasseter kicking two weeks ago against Winchester, although he did play limited action on offense, but he was not out there kicking. I don't know if he had some sort of leg injury. We actually saw co-captain and senior Asen Rosenmeyer filling in at the kicking spot. He was a two of five on uh, PATs. Uh, all three of his misses were actually blocked by the red and black of Winchester. But uh, it's good to have Austin Lasseter back in there kicking, and he boomed that extra point with uh, plenty to spare. And the Marauders have taken a 9-7 lead here in the second quarter, 8-14 to go until halftime. Marauders taking advantage of the uh, onside kick attempt by Arlington and then the illegal touch by the Spy Ponders. Set up Belmont uh, with a 45-yard touchdown drive capped off by the 11-yard run from Adrian Garung, who is, uh, continues to just keep putting up the numbers. And again, the best news for Brian McRae, Garung only a junior, and he'll be back next season carrying the rock for the Marauders ground game. As will, of course, quarterback Jaden Arnold be back next year, too. So you mentioned only five seniors on this team. Uh, plenty of the offensive weapons will be back again next year. But why look ahead to next year when this year's been going so well? Marauders three and three coming in, having won their last two in a row. Booming kick. Taken by Arlington's number one, Sean Boyce. Boyce will get to about the 20, a little bit over the 20, and that's where the Spy Ponders will take over here in the second quarter. So far, Arlington's only scoring drive came when they recovered a fumble in Belmont territory and had a, a drive of just 36 yards, leading to their touchdown run from Caden Mills. So now we'll get to see if the Arlington offense can actually march down the field as they will start this drive at their own 21. So can they drive 79 yards down the field? Meanwhile, the Belmont High Marching Band, even here with eight minutes to go till halftime, they are anxious here on senior night. They can't wait to get on the field and perform for the fans here at Harris Field with uh, one of their great classic music medleys. That'll be coming up at halftime. They're already making their way uh, down onto the, uh, the track behind the end zone to our left. Meanwhile, it's first and 10, Shiano handing off to Mills again. Caden Mills gets uh, a couple. Marauders uh, in there for the stop. Looked like, uh, again, that might have been Ryan Haller in 54. One of the Marauder defenders in on the stop. Haller in a junior offensive and defensive lineman. I believe he's the younger brother of a former Belmont captain, because I know there was a Halloran on the team a couple seasons ago. Really, if I look at the, this Belmont roster, I see a lot of similar last, uh, familiar last names, but uh, obviously these are all the uh, younger brothers of the players I remember from a few years back. Uh, Mills again on second down. He'll be close to a first, but be about, we'll say, uh, we'll say a short two or a long one, but it will be third down. And right now, Rotter head coach Brian McCray will take a timeout. It comes with 7-11. How convenient to go here in the second quarter. It is Belmont 9 and Arlington 7. Marauders trying to win their fourth game of the season and third in Middlesex League Liberty Division play and continue their quest for a possible MIAA Division II playoff berth. Again, as we mentioned, top 16 teams based on power ranking, strength of schedule, there's a lot of different factors, and basically every team generates a point total, which is based on all those different factors. And right now the Marauders currently are 21st, yet they have to get into the top 16 to qualify for the Division II uh, playoffs. 
With a win tonight, that should certainly help the Marauders position. It might help them move up a little bit in the standings, although sometimes uh, it really comes down to also how you play against some of the better teams. Arlington currently um, is ranked uh, down near the bottom of the 34 teams. I think they're 27th maybe uh, in the uh, current MIA D2 uh, power rankings out of 34 teams with their uh, two and four overall mark and their winless mark in the league. Obviously, your power ranking goes up much higher and quicker if you can uh, beat uh, better teams. And also if you can beat teams in a higher division with you, that's kind of more what having to do with the non-league schedule. Third down carry, and it looks like Arlington's got enough for the first down. They'll move the chains. I believe, uh, well, it might have been Mills again. Always hard to tell when you got all these guys running into a giant rugby scrum. As we've been mentioning throughout the season, there are uh, six uh, Belmont football players who are members of the, uh, the boys' rugby team. So they are pretty familiar with uh, <laughs> that uh, formation. Here's Caden Mills again, and he'll be uh, tackled uh, near the line of scrimmage by Max Cornelius. And, Mills uh, wriggles free to get a couple more yards and actually pick up some positive yards. But uh, give some credit to uh, Max Cornelius, the junior, for slowing him down. Actually, Max Cornelius is one of those six uh, players, along with his older brother, Jake, who's one of the senior captains. Unfortunately, Jake uh, not available this evening out due to injury, which is kind of tough on senior night, I can imagine. Uh, Jake, though, was honored along with all the Belmont seniors, all five of them prior to the start of the game. Uh, both the players and the parents uh, were out there uh, being recognized by public address announcer Al Gledhill, longtime PA announcer here at Harris Field. Anyway, it's second down, oh! pass in the flat, and what a play by Brian Logan, who almost, he anticipated that play so well, he got a hand on it, and had he got in there maybe a step or even a half step sooner, maybe he could have pulled that in, and if he had made the pick there, he would have been off to the races for a, what we like to call now in the modern day, a pick six. Back in the old days, that used to be called an interception return for touchdown. Again, the old fart in me would like to remind you that of days gone by, but it isn't. Everyone nowadays, for at least the last 10, 15, 20 years, likes to call it a pick six. That's like so trendy. I have to admit, that one's a pretty cool name, though. I, shortening it to pick six actually does sound kind of cool. Here's Shiano, but uh, we got flags flying. And I think there might have been some movement on the line. And it is false start on Arlington. So instead of third and six, it's going to be third and 11. That certainly changes the complexion of whatever play uh, Arlington head coach Matt O'Loughlin had in mind for his quarterback, Jake Shiano. But again, back to Logan on defense. And we mentioned his number a few times, as I said, in the, uh, in, actually in both of the games we covered in the, uh, the season opener against Cambridge and then a couple of weeks ago against Winchester. Uh, both times, uh, Logan has uh, made life difficult for opposing offenders. I guess that would be offensive players, but. <laughs> Third down and Again, we're going to call this a uh, little over 10, almost 11 yards. Shiano in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. He's back. He fires deep down the field. It's incomplete. He was looking for Caden Mills. And Mills well covered by number 11 senior co-captain Ben William. Again, we will definitely make sure the seniors get their love tonight. Uh, ben William, again, one of those five seniors in, one of the uh, five co-captains of this Marauder team. Again, we've been debating, I think, or at least I've been debating in my mind whether we want to call them Quint captains or... Uh, see, I think once you have more than two captains, I think everyone's a co-captain, right? I mean, I think. Please feel free to correct me, though. You can uh, send your tweets to uh, the Belmont Media Center and say, what's up with that announcer? Calling them Quint captains or co-captains. Another high snap, uh, and it's uh, a good punt here for Arlington. Looks like it's going to be down to about the 32-yard line by Sean Boyce. So Marauders will take over. We have four minutes, 38 seconds to go here 
until halftime. Marauders try to build on a 9-7 lead. The difference so far in this game, uh, first quarter safety, courtesy of a high snap, a little higher than the one we just saw to the Arlington punter. Um, the first quarter snap sailed over the head of Jake Shiano. He had a fall on it in the back of the end zone where he was tackled by the Marauder defense for a safety. Now on the return, well, there really wasn't a return, of course. The ball was just downed by Arlington, but one of the Marauders was holding. And it's going to be a uh, penalty on Belmont. So this drive is going to start a little bit deeper. We're going to call it now the 22-yard line. Now I got to tell you, adding insult to injury is on a punt play when your t your, the return team does not get any kind of return. In fact, they just let the ball roll, and yet you get called for holding. That's kind of, a, I'm sure, uh, Coach McCray not pleased about that. That'll, that'll probably show up in the game film. I know a certain uh, NFL quarterback who coaches at Gillette Stadium who would probably be playing that numerous times. I don't think that'll happen here. but uh, And now we've got uh, more whistles, and actually we have a timeout being called by Arlington head coach Matt O'Loughlin. Not quite sure. Uh, apparently uh, Rodgers were lined up in some formation that O'Loughlin didn't like. So we have a timeout here on the field. Again, 4.38 to go until halftime at Belmont 9, Arlington 7. Marauders looking to win their third in a row and improve to 4-3 and three on the season and 3-1 and one in Liberty Division play. Marauders will travel to Woburn next week. That'll wrap up the regular season. And then two weeks from either tonight or tomorrow will be the start of the MIA Division II playoffs. Marauders hoping to be a part of that. Again, they have to finish in the top 16 to qualify for playoff action. Of course, with 34 uh, teams in Division II, the, the, they're the top 16 go to the playoffs. The bottom 18 actually end up going into what, I mean, I, don't, I know they, they don't call it a loser's bracket. For lack of a better term, that's kind of what I'm referring to it as. Uh, I guess the non-playoff bracket would probably be a, a better term, better way of saying it. Anyway, those teams will play each other, and uh, Marauders, uh, if they don't finish in the top 16 uh, in terms of power rankings, they would be playing uh, in the non-playoff bracket. So they will still be playing some other games uh, two weeks from now, uh, except that those games would not be counting towards uh, the possibility of a uh, Division II Super Bowl appearance. Anyway, here's uh, Adrian Garung. Garung will uh, work his way up to close to the 25-yard line, so let's say a gain of three. And... Uh, second down. It is a gain of three officially. So. In the shotgun, it's Jaden Arno. To his left is Garung. We've got Cogliano and Ben Williams split up to the near side. And now here comes Cogliano in motion. Fake to Cogliano on the uh, pass by. And Jaden Arno keeps it himself. And not fooled on that play was number 41, Ori Forrest, a freshman for Arlington. Of course, we mentioned, uh, we've been mentioning here on senior night, Belmont has just uh, five seniors. Well, the Spy Potters themselves only have eight seniors, and they have an awful lot of underclassmen, a lot of freshmen and sophomores uh, on Matt O'Loughlin's roster, and that was one of them there, Ori Forrest, a freshman in on the tackle. A lot of freshmen getting uh, varsity action for Arlington, sort of a, a bit of a rebuilding mode. Maybe that explains in part their, their two and four uh, overall record. Third and seven for the Marauders at their 25. Jaden Arno working out of the shotgun with two receivers split here to the near side. And Jaden Arno uh, feeling a little pressure. He's gonna throw that one downfield. Ben William is wide open. First down and more, here goes William. The senior, and he will be tackled at the 15-yard line of Arlington. But not before picking up a big gain, Ben William, senior co-captain, first down the Marauders. Marauders converting on the third and seven for a gain of about 60 yards on the Arno to Ben William connection. Captain to captain. First and 10, Belmont at the Arlington 15. Just 
Ben William was wide open. He got totally behind the defense and then using those long strides to get deep into Arlington territory. A gain of about 60 yards on that pass play. Here's Arno again. This time he's looking to the end zone. It's going to be incomplete. Receiver fell down. I think there was uh, receivers were tangled up. I think that was Cogliano. And uh, it looked like it was kind of a crossing pattern there. And Cogliano now kind of walking gingerly back to the huddle. Cogliano, of course, about the game-winning touchdown two weeks ago against Winchester. Catching the uh, game-winning 33-yard TD pass from Arno. Second and 10. Logan is split uh, far to the left side. It's Cogliano and William here to the uh, short near side. And it's going to be a handoff to Garung. Garung will uh, bull the pile forward. Well, you watch Adrian Garung against these defensive players, and he gets into these scrums, and he moves the pile forward. I'm looking here. I have six Belmont players who are members of the boys' rugby team in the spring. Adrian Garung is not one of them. But I will tell you, if I was the Belmont rugby uh, program, uh, I would be trying to recruit Mr. Garung because he is, uh, he is doing a good job of moving the pile. Third down and six. Of course, I really don't know what uh, Adrian does for spring sports. Maybe he plays, uh, maybe he plays uh, another sport uh, like lacrosse or baseball. Offside is the call on Arlington. So that's going to change third and six to third and one. So when Arlington had a third and six on offense, they committed a penalty and it became third and 11. They couldn't convert. Belmont has a third and six on offense. Arlington commits the penalty again and it becomes a third and one. And now a whole bunch of options here for uh, head coach Brian McCray to dial up. Let's see which uh, play he's delivered to his quarterback, Jaden Arno. Arno is in the shotgun and of course right next to him to his left is Adrian Garung. Third down and one at the Arlington six. And Arno's going to keep it himself, and he's going to try to turn the corner, get into the end zone, and he does! Jaden Arno scoring a Marauder touchdown with 1.19 to go in the first half, extending the Belmont lead. Nice piece of running by the junior QB, Jaden Arno, who again is dangerous in the air and on his feet. Using his speed to get to the outside and turn the corner. And that makes it 15-7. Austin Lassiter will again line up for the point after. Kind of a big one here as it would put Belmont up by two scores. The kick is up and good. Two solid kicks by Austin Lassiter on the uh, PATs tonight. And with 119 left to go here in the second quarter, teams will come up field. And the Marauders now lead by two scores. It's Belmont 16, Arlington 7, with time winding down here in the first half. Jaden Ardo capping off that uh, drive for Belmont. Following the Arlington punt, six yard uh, TD run. And so the Marauders uh, again extending the lead, their second touchdown here in the second quarter. I'm hearing some fans here in the stands talking about uh, these teams having a common opponent. Uh, they have both played Reading, as we did mention earlier. Uh, Arlington lost to Reading last week, 55 to seven. Marauders lost uh, back in, I think it was week three, week four. Uh, their first league game was 35-7 was the game up there. Reading among one of the top teams in division two. And uh, as, as has been the case the last few years, they're one of the favorites to be playing at uh, Gillette Stadium in the uh, D2 Super Bowl. Thank you. Rodders uh, hoping though, at least at the very least, they can crack the top 16 of D2 in the power rankings and uh, get their way into the uh, this year's playoffs. There's a uh, long kick downfield and the uh, return man goes down to a knee as he returns the ball. That's number one, Sean Boyce with a little bit of a uh, faux pas there as he caught the ball, then went to the ground and hit a knee. And in high school, of course, once you go down to a knee, you're down. And so Arlington now will have to start this drive back at their five yard line. 
I believe that's where they're spotting the ball. Actually, they're going to give the Spy Ponders a little bit of a break. I think they're spotting it at the 7. Well, regardless, though, uh, not a great place for the Spy Ponders to be starting with just uh, 78 ticks to go till halftime. Long ways for Arlington to go, and we should point out again, Arlington's only touchdown in this game came on a short 36-yard drive that uh, was a short drive uh, due to a uh, forcing a fumble and uh, recovering at the Belmont 36. That was uh, Arlington taking advantage of that turnover and getting points, but Arlington has yet to show in this game they've been able to drive the length of the field. Caden Mills is going to... Did Caden Mills get the direct snap on that? Because it kind of looked like it. Is that a direct snap to Mills? A little wildcat action here from Matt O'Loughlin's Spy Ponders. Trying to give his team a little bit of breathing room. Ball up close to the 10-yard line. It'll be second down. Clock continues to run. Now inside a minute. And uh, that'll be a catch uh, pass reception for Jacob Kerbel, senior wide receiver. Marauders have done a really good job holding Kerbel in check. He's been their top... Uh, Receiver on the season. Riders take a timeout here. Brian McRae calling it with 49 seconds to go here in the first half as it's third down and four. And well, if, if the Riders have the timeouts, it makes all the sense in the world for Coach McRae to call one here because it's third down. If the Marauder defense can hold Arlington, they'll force them to a punt, possibly from their own end zone or at least uh, in the shadows of their goalposts, as it were. And that would give the Marauders some great field position, uh, maybe getting the ball close to midfield and a chance to add some more points on before halftime. Again, glad you could join us here at Harris Field. I'm Todd Bloniars, our cameraman and executive producer of BHS Sports TV, Jeremy Meserve. We're proud to be bringing you all the action of Marauders Middlesex League varsity football. A rivalry that did not exist when I first started calling Belmont football games uh, nearly 30 years ago. Yes, friends, if you didn't know already, I'm kind of old. Uh, but back then, Arlington and Belmont were not members of the Middlesex League. I believe Arlington back then was in the dual county league, I think. Ooh, someone's probably going to get me on that one. I'm not sure. I, I know they weren't in, in the Middlesex League for sure, even though, of course, uh, Belmont and Arlington are neighboring towns. Of course, everyone talks about the Belmont-Watertown rivalry. You have neighboring towns. Watertown's to the south of Belmont. Arlington is to the north. And until like the last 15 years, it was not a, uh, they were not league rivals, but they are now. First down on a Shiano completion to, uh, I think that was Kerbal. That is number six, Kerbal. Jacob Kerbal and uh, got up a little sl uh, slowly there. It is good for a first down. And so, Rodgers uh, look like they will not get the ball back this half as Arlington is able to convert on that big third down. Here's a pass to the near side to Kerbal. He catches it. And I'm not 100% sure. Did they? I thought I saw it. Yeah, there was a flag thrown on the near side. It kind of got lost in the uh, Belmont bench in front of me, but I thought I saw the official throw in some laundry. And it's a false start on Arlington. Five-yard penalty. Comes with 23 seconds left. Uh, again, I'm not sure what Belmont has left for timeouts here in this half, but uh, you might see Coach O'Laughlin uh, ask Shiano to take a knee here and just close out the half following that penalty. First and 15 now with the ball being backed up to the 18-yard uh, line. Uh, does not look, based on this formation, it does not look like Shiano's going to take a knee. It's a spread offense, five receivers. Three to the far side, two to the near. Here's Shiano back. Looks near side, comes near pass, complete to Mills. Mills uh, trying to fight some tackles. He'll have a first down up to about the 38-yard line. 15 seconds left. Clock's going to stop momentarily as they uh, reset the, the chains. I believe it will start as soon as uh, the officials uh, give the okay. First and 10, pass deflected, caught by Kerbal though. Kerbal trying to break some tackles. He drags Austin Lassiter into Belmont territory at about the 47 yard line. Good for a first down, but only, I think only about eight seconds left here. Again, a temporary clock stoppage. 
The chains have moved. I don't believe, no, maybe they're gonna say Mills got out of bounds. Clock remains stopped. Officials have not started it. So now at the Belmont uh, 47, uh, Shiano will get to maybe see how good is, how strong his arm is. Can he get one to the end zone from here? Because that might be about all the time he has left. Maybe there's a chance for two plays. Let's see. Shiano's looking, and now he's gonna he's gonna run with it and gets tackled in the middle of the field, and that will end the first half as making the tackle was Ryan Haller in number 54. So that's gonna do it. 24 minutes in the books here at Harris Field, and Marauders looking for their third straight win all in Liberty Division play and looking good so far. Your halftime score, Belmont 16, Arlington 7, back with more action in the second half. It'll be coming up here on BHS Sports TV. Stick around. Welcome back to Harris Field here on Senior Night 2022. The Marauders enjoying a 16-7 lead over the Arlington Spy Ponders and bidding for their third straight win to go over 500 for the first time uh, since week one of the season and also win their third consecutive game in the Middlesex League Liberty Division. And with that four and three record, uh, certainly will uh, be MIA Division II playoff eligible as the Marauders try to crack the top 16 of D2. 34 D, uh, D3 schools total in the top 16 advance to uh, the playoffs and a chance, uh, of course, at the high school Super Bowls uh, coming up in early December. Marauders 16-7 is their lead. Uh, they scored first and they scored last in, this, uh, first half, in the first half. Marauders uh, got their only points of the first quarter on a safety. Uh, that was courtesy of a bad snap. Uh, Marauders had, uh, uh, Jaden Arno uh, was intercepted in the end zone because he got hit as he threw the ball. The ball was intercepted by Arlington's Gaspard Pernard. And then on the very first offensive play of the game for Arlington, they uh, suffered a, a high snap. It went over the head of quarterback Jack Shiano. He fell on in the back of the end zone where he was tackled for a Belmont safety. That came with 521 to go in the first quarter, gave Belmont a 2 nothing lead. Arlington then actually took the lead early in the second quarter on an eight-yard touchdown run by Caden Mills, their junior running back, putting uh, the Spy Ponders up 7-2. to That touchdown capped off a 36-yard drive as Arlington capitalized on uh, a turnover by Belmont. Adrian Garung fumbled, and so it was a short touchdown drive. Arlington putting up their only points of this first half. And uh, for uh, Gaspard Pernard in the first half, uh, he intercepted a ball on defense. He caught a pass on offense from his quarterback, Jake, uh, Jack Schiano, and then also kicked an extra point. So uh, he said uh, quite a well-rounded first half of showing his versatility. Anyway, that put Arlington up 7-2, but then uh, about two minutes later, Marauders uh, took the lead, 11-yard touchdown run for Adrian Garung, uh, coming off the 202 yards and three rushing touchdowns a week ago at Lexington. That gave Belmont a 9-7 lead after Austin Lasseter kicked the extra point. And then with just uh, 79 seconds to go in the first half, Jaden Arno uh, turned the corner and ran in six yards to the pylon. And that uh, puts us where we stand now at 16-7. Arlington deferred the opening kickoff and so Belmont kicks off to them. And here is Arlington with the second half kickoff going from left to right here in the third quarter. Ethan Nelson, a junior, number 34, returns the ball past his own 35-yard line, and Arlington will take over. First and 10 at around there. Let's see where they're going to officially spot this. Looks like they're spotting it at the 37-yard uh, line, something like that. Well, and again, want to welcome all of you to BHS Sports TV's coverage of Marauders football. Whether you're here in Belmont and you're watching the, us live on uh, Comcast Channel 96, Verizon Channel 30, or Verizon Channel 2130, that's their HD channel. Or you can also watch us online, of course, streaming live right now, belmontmedia.org slash infotv. If you're from outside the Belmont area, that is probably where you're watching us right now. We hope you're enjoying the game. 
First and 10, here is a handoff and here is a tackle. Senior co-captain Chris Cogliato here on senior night. Wants to remind you that he's not only a talented receiver, but he can play a little defense too. And he makes the tackle on Caden Mills for a loss on the play. Meanwhile, we saw this late in the first half after uh, Cogliano got kind of tangled up on an offensive uh, wide receiver uh, route pattern, and he kind of walked a little gingerly. And as I look at Cogliano, number one, again, he's again walking a little bit gingerly. But, hey, it's senior night. He's going to tough this one out. As long as, long as, his, uh, as long as his legs are functioning, he will be out there on the field playing. Second and long, Giano completes the pass over the middle to Caden Mills. Mills breaks tackles, he's got a first down, and he's in Belmont territory, he's still going, and uh, trying to get tackled, finally gets tackled by Bryce Hubbard, number 83. Wow, Caden Mills showing some skills there, catching a short pass over the middle on second and about 15. And he turns it into a huge gain inside the Belmont 20 yard line. Gain of about 45 yards on the Shiano to Mills hookup. It's pretty much been the Caden Mills show. He has their only offensive touchdown. And right now he is uh, flanked next to Shiano, who's going to keep this one himself. First and 10, big hole. First down, football! Loose, it's recovered by Adrian Garung of the Marauders. And talk about a little poetic justice because it was Garung who fumbled in the second quarter, helping to lead to a short touchdown drive for Arlington. And this time it's Chiano who coughs it up right into the hands of the ever opportunistic Adrian Garung, star running back and also uh, playing a little defensive back in the Marauders secondary. And that is the first Arlington turnover, but it's a big one and Belmont gets the football. First and 10 at their own 16. Belmont lost the turnover battle in the first half with uh, having uh, thrown an interception and fumbling the ball and those two turnovers did lead to Arlington's only points. Here's a handoff to Garung after recovering the fumble and Garung still going. And here's Garung in the open field. Adrian Garung is gonna go the distance for a Marauder touchdown. 84 yards and the fifth touchdown in the last two games for Adrian Garung. brilliant 20 seconds by Garun. He just recovered a fumble and on the very next play takes the handoff and dashes 84 yards to the house. Belmont 22, Arlington 7 with 10.06 to go here in the third quarter. That's the second rushing TD of the night for the junior running back slash defensive back, Adrian Garung. Austin Lassiter's point after is up and good. Austin Lassiter three for three on PATs tonight. And again, 10.06 to go here in the third quarter. Teams will come back upfield. Marauders take immediate advantage of the Spy Ponder turnover and get points. It is now Belmont 23 and Arlington seven as the Marauders bidding for their third consecutive win and fourth of the season and uh, playing a tremendous effort here on senior night at Harris Field. I want to remind you, uh, all you viewers out there, that uh, we will have more Marauder football uh, coming up this season, at least one more broadcast that I, I know of for sure, and that will be Thanksgiving week, not Thanksgiving day, but Thanksgiving week. It'll actually be the Wednesday prior uh, to Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Eve, I guess that's the unofficial official name for the day. Belmont and Watertown will meet for way, what may be the 100th time or pretty close to it at Venerable old Fenway Park in Boston. A hundred year old football rivalry playing in a hundred year old ballpark. That'll be coming up Thanksgiving week and we're looking forward to bringing you that game. Belmont and Watertown should be a fun one on uh, for your Turkey Day uh, enjoyment. 
one day early, of course. Here's the return. Ball pops loose. I think the Bobo Marauders may have recovered it again. Let's see. No, they're saying Watertown got it. Ball did pop loose, though. It'll be first and 10, Arlington. Did I just say Watertown recovered that? Sorry, friends. I was just talking about the Belmont-Watertown game coming up next month. It is Arlington is the opponent tonight. Not the team, not the town to the south of Belmont, but the town to the north. Spy Ponders will have it first and 10 at their own 30 after the fumble by Shiano leads immediately to an 84-yard TD run on the very next play by Adrian Garung of the Marauders. Belmont 23, Arlington 7, 9.56 to go here, third quarter. Caden Mills, he's tried to be a one-man show tonight for Arlington, and that time, big 77, Asa Rosenmeyer, one of the five senior co-captains, was honored with his parents prior to the game. Makes the big tackle there. Asa Rosemeyer, of course, also a member of the Belmont rugby team. His dad, Peter, who uh, calls uh, the Belmont uh, rugby games for BHS Sports TV. And I don't want to let the cat out of the bag here, but there is a possibility. Hopefully, Peter will be joining us on the microphone for the Thanksgiving Eve Belmont Watertown football game. Been trying to get Peter up here in the booth with me all season. As you can tell, it's not easy calling a game by yourself. We are hoping, beyond hope, that uh, Peter will be joining us on the Thanksgiving broadcast. Here is Shiano looking deep down the field. There was a flag down, passes incomplete. Looks like uh, Caden Mills was the intended receiver, I think, unless that was Kerbal down there. Uh, let's see what the call is here. It was thrown at the line of scrimmage, so. Appears it would be in the area where it is offensive holding. Here comes the referee. Actually, it's going to be a false start on Watertown, so it'll be a five-yard... Uh, water. Ar did it again. Arlington, Arlington. Ah, uh, yeah, it's all those A's, R's, and T's in there. I'm going to say Arlington. Yes, the spy ponders. Okay, I'm going to stop talking about that, that Thanksgiving game because uh, otherwise I'm going to keep calling these guys by the wrong name. Five-yard penalty on the spy ponders of Arlington High School. Of course, those of you not familiar with Arlington, Massachusetts, there is a very large body of water in Arlington, affectionately known as Spy Pond. Hence, the Spy Ponder's name. A name that should offend nobody. Unless you're not into ponds, I don't know. Here is a uh, Shiano pass. That one is caught in the flat by Caden Mills. Marauder defense is now just honing in on Caden Mills. Or check that, that's six Kerbal. Kind of limited offensive weapons here for uh, Arlington. It's pretty much been mostly Caden Mills with a little dash of Jacob Kerbel sprinkled in on occasion. And the Marauder defense just kind of going to town here. Another tackle for a loss. Third and 15. Well, actually, they're going to say no gain. That was not a tackle for a loss. We'll say a gain of zero. A gain of zero, which... If you're a fan of the television show Young Sheldon, you may, if you've seen this week's episode, you might say to yourself, it's a gain of zero, but is zero really a number? Eh, we really don't have time to get into that discussion here. Third and 15, and Shiano gets hit as he throws deep down the field, and the pass is almost caught by Kerbal, broken up by Austin Lassiter. Playing some defense and doing a nice job to break that up. It looked like Kerbal had hands on it, but Lassiter was able to get in there and break it up. And uh, Shiano took a bit of a shot as he was throwing the football, too, so some good defensive pressure by the Marauders. Fourth and the long, and that's going to force the Spy Potters to punt. It'll be number 11, Marcus Byrne. And back deep for the Marauders, I believe that's Miles Torres, number 25. And he may have touched that. I think Torres may have touched that. That's a free ball, I think. Well, let's see. Arlington has it, and they are going to get the recovery. Number five, Manu Mahaterian 
comes up with the loose ball. Now that punt, it, when it went up in the air, Torres was coming in on it, and at the last second, it looked like he tried to maybe get out of the way, but at the same time, I, I could kind of tell it glanced off him, but he didn't quite recognize that that then became a free ball, and one of the other Marauder special teamers was back there trying to fall on it, but instead, it's the sophomore for Arlington, Manu Mahaterarian. M-A-H-E-N-T-H-I-R-A-N, Mahan Thiran. There you go. Third tries the charm. First and 10 Arlington at the Belmont 36 yard line. Spy Ponders get the break they need on Belmont's third turnover. Down 23 to seven are the Spy Ponders and there is a flag and it will be a false start. On Arlington, that's about the third or fourth false start called on Matt O'Laughlin's offense here in the uh, ball game. Moves the ball back to the Belmont 40, and they'll be called uh, a first and 15 for Arlington from there. Again, Belmont leading by 16 in this contest between these two Middlesex League Liberty Division rivals. You know, I was looking back at some of the scores of these games over the, uh, well, the last six years, uh, these teams have split, each winning three, and four of those six games were decided by less than four points. And of those four close games between these two teams, Belmont won three of them. When they met last year at Arlington, the Spy Ponders were victorious 27 to seven. Last Belmont win against Arlington came here at Harris Field in Coach Jan Cuman's final game as the Marauder head coach. Played in the spring of 2021, Belmont won 18 to 14 in that one. Here's a handoff to Caden Mills again. Mills uh, is going to get back the penalty yardage on second down and a yard more. So a gain of six on second and 15. It'll bring up... Uh... Oh, check that. I'm sorry. That was first and 15. So it's second and nine. And the ball is sitting on the Belmont 34-yard line. Clock continues to run. Less than six minutes to go now here in the third quarter. Belmont 23 and Arlington 7. Marauders leading by a couple of touchdowns and a couple of two-point conversions. So presumably if Arlington's able to finish this drive with a touchdown, I would have to think they're probably gonna be going for two. But we haven't seen Arlington march all the way down the field for a score yet. That ball's batted in the air and intercepted! Ryan Halloran's got it, Halloran is into Arlington territory and finally brought down at the Arlington 35-yard line. Somebody from the Marauders got a hand on that right near the line of scrimmage and deflected it in the air, very similar in fashion to the first half throw by Arno when he got hit as he threw the ball down near the Arlington goal line. And the lucky recipient for Belmont was number 54, junior Ryan Halloran. He pulls it in and that is the, now the fifth turnover of this game, second on Arlington. And again, they, both of Arlington's turnovers that they've committed have been here in this third quarter as they try to make their way back in this ball game. Very costly turnovers. Marauders certainly uh, took advantage of the first turnover as Adrian Garung recovered the fumble and then the next play they handed off to Garung and he sprinted 84 yards to Paydirt. We got flags down on first and 10 for Belmont here at the 35 flag was thrown near the line of scrimmage. Want to say that's an illegal shift, I think. Oh, illegal participation. Uh. Yeah, it's a, uh, actually, I think the official name I saw from one of the uh, high school officiating sites for, for hand signals, a substitution infraction, meaning that, yeah, and as uh, public address announcer Al Gledhill pointed out, there were 12 men on the field for Belmont. A little bit of a problem. Somebody uh, came in and someone else forgot to leave. Now Coach Brian McRae has uh, 11 guys out there for the Marauder offense. Jaden Arno. Junior quarterback and uh, one of the five captains is in the shotgun. 
First play, he's going to the end zone for Chris Cogliano. Touchdown, the Raiders! And again, a pair of captains hook up here on senior night. It's the senior Chris Cogliano coming down with the grab. A 30-yard touchdown pass from Jaden Arno. Arno's first TD pass of the evening. And the Marauders extend their lead. It's now 29-17 with the extra point pending. And 5-18 to go here in the third quarter. Lassiter's kick is up and good. Austin Lassiter four for four on the PATs tonight. And for the second time in this third quarter, following an Arlington Spy Ponder turnover, the Marauders on the first offensive play after the turnover get points. This time, it's Jaden Arno to Chris Cogliano for 35 yards and a touchdown. Of course, those two teamed up two weeks ago for a 33-yard game-winning touchdown pass with just 15 seconds left. Marauders coming from behind to beat Winchester in that one, 32 to 30. And it's all been coming up roses for the Marauders and their offense since that point. Having won at Lexington last week, putting up 35 points. And now the Marauders have put up 30 points here tonight. So if you're keeping score, that's three consecutive games. Belmont has scored 30 points. And it looks like they are well on their way to their third straight win, not a coincidence. Seniors are making their uh, presence felt here on senior night at Harris Field. Senior Chris Cogliano had a nice defensive play earlier and that time uh, catches a 35 yard TD pass in the back of the end zone. Beautiful throw by Jaden Arno and uh, Cogliano beat his man and just pulled that one in. Again, the five senior captains, uh, check, check that, four senior captains, Chris Cogliano, Ben William, Asa Rosemeyer, Jake Cornelius. Cornelius is injured tonight. And of course, Alex Colejo is the uh, fifth Belmont senior. And uh, that ball uh, on the kickoff now is returned by Arlington up to the 38 yard line. Only, as we mentioned, just five seniors for Belmont. A lot of players will be coming back to this Belmont team that seems to have finally found its stride after a, a one and three start. Real test for Belmont uh, maybe next week at Woburn. The Tanners right now uh, three and three overall, one and one in Liberty Division play. Not sure. Uh, I think uh, I think the reason why Woburn has won fewer uh, division game is I believe their uh, Thanksgiving game is against. Uh, a uh, league opponent. In fact, it is. I think they play Winchester on Thanksgiving, and I notice Winchester has also only played twice in Liberty Division. So, uh, Woburn and Winchester won't play that uh, that fifth and final game until uh, Thanksgiving. Now, here's a, a pass out in the flat. That's a Kerbal, I believe. Chiano finding Kerbal on a first down play. There's a flag on the field over on the far side, right near the line of scrimmage perhaps in the area of holding. Or again, uh, with all the false starts by the Spy Ponders tonight, it, it might be that. No, it looks like an illegal hold. So it'll be a 10 yard penalty. Arlington's uh, been hurt tonight by uh, the penalties throughout the game and then two big turnovers this quarter that have turned to 14 Marauder points. First down, flag down. Tackle for loss, was I was that Asa Rosenmeyer, I believe, who made the tackle in the backfield? And might be Rosenmeyer grabbed the face mask of, uh, of Caden Mills. That's uh, unfortunately gonna be a 15 yard penalty against Belmont and will give Arlington an automatic first down. I believe, I think personal foul brings with it an automatic first down. 
They move the ball up to the 40, and it is going to be first and 10, actually just outside the Arlington 40. Or no, well, no, they're not saying it's a, uh, nope. Huh, interesting. Okay, I thought personal foul was automatic first down, but I guess not. So it's going to be second down and eight. Second and eight for Arlington. They have to get to their own 48 for a first down. So second and eight following the um, face mask penalty on Belmont. Here's Shiano in the shotgun. Fires and the pass is caught by Kerbal. Kerbal will be tackled immediately. Gang tackle, the sea of maroon coming down on Jacob Kerbal. So he'll be short of the first down, probably by about three yards. Looks like they're gonna spot that at the 45. So third and three upcoming. So again, another uh, big test for the Belmont defense, third and three upcoming here. Kerbal's been a little bit more involved in Arlington's offense in the first, uh, in this third quarter. You didn't uh, think he might have only had about one touch in the uh, first half. Here's a pass far side. That, is that Kerbal again? I think it is, and Kerbal will have enough for a first down. Well, right now, uh, I think Jacob Kerbal, in order to get himself more involved in the offense, is simply just running uh, a kind of a quick out. He's like, he, he'll get he'll line up on the line of scrimmage, probably run about five yards, especially on shorter plays like third and three, and then just kind of turn around really quick. And uh, he's there to catch a short pass and get the first down, kind of uh, what you'd expect out of a senior wide receiver. He's played uh, his fair share of varsity football. So the drive continues for Arlington, first and 10 at the Belmont 48 yard line. Rodder showing a little bit of blitz, perhaps, but now uh, a long pass downfield, incomplete. And again, they were looking for Kerbal on a deep pattern, and again, Austin Lassiter comes up big defending Kerbal. Lassiter, the junior defensive back, who's listed on the Marauder roster at just 5'8". We don't have a height for Kerbal, but I would dare say he's got to be close to six feet if not a little over so he's got uh, an advantage of several inches over Lassiter but Austin's done a nice job uh, on some of those deeper patterns tonight breaking up the passes as Kerbal uh, in most instances getting a hand on the throw but not able to pull it in so second and ten here is Caden Mills the other half of the Arlington offense here and Mills with some shifty moves and he'll get a first down He's finally brought down. I think the Marauders are going to get called for a horse collar there. It was the flag thrown on the sideline, and, and Mills was brought down from behind, and it looked like someone grabbed the back of his, uh, his uniform collar, and I believe that's what the call is going to be. Personal foul on Belmont, and I believe it would be for the horse collaring. I... Again, I know in the NFL, a horse collar is an illegal play. It's obviously an illegal play in high school football because uh, they don't actually refer to it as horse collar. They just call it personal foul. But you can see on that tackle when Mills was dragged out out of bounds, he got pulled down from behind. And uh, really, you just you can't make tackles that way. It's all about uh, player safety. So after that uh, penalty, personal foul, 15-yard penalty. It's first and 10 at the 17 of Belmont. Shiano's going to keep it himself, but he's going to get swarmed and pushed back. And that time, number five, Stephen Hong, junior linebacker, was the first one in there to kind of be the uh, point of resistance uh, for Shiano. So it'll be a loss on the play of one, second and 11 for Arlington. We're down under two and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Belmont 30, Arlington 7. It's been a great night for the Marauders here on senior night at Harris Field in what may very well be the final game played at Harris Field this season. And if it is, the Marauders uh, certainly to this point uh, look to be uh, going out in style. Here is a uh, handoff and another tackle for a loss. Chris Cogliano on senior night, senior co-captain with another big defensive tackle as he takes down number 34, Ethan Nelson, junior running back for another loss. Two consecutive tackles for loss by the Marauders. It's gonna bring up third and long.
Ball spotted at the Belmont 20. So now uh, third and 14. Watertown would need to get the ball to the six yard line of Belmont to get a first down. 20 yards to get a touchdown and I have to think given that we're in the final 90 seconds of the third quarter and with Arlington down by 23 points, this is probably four down territory. Field goal doesn't do a much good here. Pass to the end zone and it is broken up again by Austin Lassiter. Again defending Jacob Kerbel. Another good defensive play by Lassiter who's obviously back to full strength Two weeks ago, Lassiter had a limited play on offense. I don't know if he played much on defense, and he was not out there kicking extra points. But he is back to full strength this week, and you can certainly see it defensively. And despite the size advantage by Kerbel, well, Lassiter's been able to get the better of him on most of those deeper passes. So it's fourth down and 14. And of course, uh, as uh, we anticipated, Arlington and coach Matt O'Loughlin is going to go for it here. Field goal really does the spy ponders no good down by 23 late in the third quarter. So here's Shiano in the shotgun. And he is back to throw and he's flushed out of the pocket up front and he'll be downed. And that uh, will be a tackle. I don't know if it's gonna officially go as a sack but Brian Logan coming up with the big fourth down spot. I uh, stop. I believe uh, Shiano might have picked up a little bit of yardage so technically not a sack but certainly enough to have Arlington turn the ball over on downs with 54 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. And the Marauders now in total control of this ball game, leading 30 to seven and getting the ball back into the hands of Jaden Arno and the offense. The offense has looked good tonight. Two rushing touchdowns for Adrian Garung, 11 and 84 yards respectively. A six yard touchdown run for quarterback Jaden Arno and then a 35-yard touchdown pass by Jaden Arno to senior Chris Cogliano. Here's a uh, play, and actually, that's going to go as a fumble, I think. Uh, it is recovered I th by Belmont. Yeah, Asa Rosemeyer got on it. Jaden Arno rolled out to the left, and uh, the ball, I think, just kind of slipped out of his hand as he was trying to... Uh, Kind of cocked the ball back. It slipped out. Thankfully, Asa Rosenmeyer, a senior captain in the area, to fall on that and uh, prevent the Marauders' fourth turnover of the night. Marauders, uh, despite losing the turnover battle to this point, uh, they've had three turnovers to Arlington's two. Belmont is up 30-7. to seven. Here's a hand out to Adrian Garung, just powering his way to the near side. And he'll get back most of the lost yardage. It'll bring up third and uh, reasonable upcoming as that will mark the final play here in the third quarter from Harris Field. Again, we hope you're uh, enjoying the broadcast of tonight's game. Uh, many of you are watching the live stream on belmontmedia.org slash info TV, and we thank you for that. You might be also watching locally on Comcast Channel 96 or Verizon Channels 30 or 2130. We've finished 36 minutes here on Senior Night at Harris Field. And the Marauders, looking for their third straight win, are in control, and looks like they will be on their way to that accomplishment. As they lead 30 to seven. Here on Senior Night, glad you could join us on BHS Sports TV, alongside cameraman and executive BHS Sports TV producer, Jeremy Mazur. My name is Todd Loniars. And again, Marauders will conclude the 2022 regular season at Woburn next week. And at that point, they'll uh, see if they can somehow find their way into the top 16. They may need to win at Woburn to do it. I'm not sure if tonight's win will be enough to get them into the top 16. But a win next week might, as it would also improve the Marauders to five and three on the season and uh, four and one in Liberty Division play if they can do it. And then of course, as we said, two weeks from now, Marauders hoping to be playing meaningful playoff football as it's the start of the MIAA Division II playoffs. Redding, one of the top teams in Division II and also tops in the Liberty Division, 6-0 oh, 
coming into tonight's action. First down pass, or uh, check that third down pass. Arno to Cogliano, and looks like Cogliano's got enough for a first down as we begin play here in the fourth quarter. Captain to captain on the connection. Arno to Cogliano, the senior. Again, those five seniors who were, of course, all honored prior to the start of tonight's game. Number one, Chris Cogliano, who just caught that pass and had the 35-yard TD reception in the third quarter. Number nine, Alex Colho, Colejo, senior running back linebacker. Number 10, Jake Cornelius, senior running back linebacker. Unfortunately, not available this evening, out with an injury. Uh, number 11, Ben William, who caught a, a big 60-yard pass from Arno in the first half. And here's Adrian Durant bidding for his third touchdown of the night. He is uh, deking and diving and falling forward all the way to the Arlington 25-yard line. Another big run for Adrian Durant, who's well over 100 yards already and might be closing in on another 200-yard game like he had last week at Lexington. The final of the five seniors, of course, number 77. Can't leave him out. Big Asa Rosemeyer, all 6'4", 315 pounds of him. And all of the seniors and their parents uh, honored prior to the start of tonight's game. Marauders have a first down at the Arlington 30 yard line, or check that 25 yard line. And checking into the game now, number 83, Bryce Hubbard, he comes in for uh, Stephen Hong on a substitution. With the score what it is, I imagine, I, I kind of wondered to myself, if the Marauders get another score here, will this, that be the end of the night for Jaden Arno? And possibly a chance for uh, backup Isaiah Sars Vallon. Chance for him to get into some action. Anyway, it's Hubbard, Logan, and Cogliano all split to the far side left. Handoff goes to Garung. Oh, check that, not Garung, it's uh, number, that's number six, that would be Jaden Rodriguez. So perhaps the night is over for Garung or at the very least he's getting a little breather here. And it's the first carry of the night for junior Jaden Rodriguez. And he picks up 10 plus yards, good for a Belmont first down. Calling it a gain of exactly 10 to the 15. And again, it's Jaden Rodriguez. Rodriguez still going. He may have another first down, he's close to it. There's a late flag thrown in. Wondering if someone grabbed Jaden's face mask. Jaden listed on the roster at 5'6", 160, and seeing his size uh, out there amongst some of the bigger defensive players for Arlington, I, I'd say that might be accurate. Let's see what the flag is. Also, also an injured Arlington player on the field, and in fact, the penalty's against Belmont, so that run will come back, and uh, they're tending to the injured Spy Ponder player. We have 10 minutes and 16 seconds to go here in the ball game. Senior night, uh, of course, uh, not just the uh, five senior football players uh, have been honored throughout the evening, but of course, prior to the game, the uh, senior cheerleaders all honored before the game. And I, I think right now, uh, Jeremy has them on camera. The seniors and their parents were honored prior to start the game. Shout out to Joanna Juvelis, uh, very uh, hardworking uh, BMC contributor with, uh, I don't know what she got, about 17 shows right now on the BMC channel. She's everywhere. She's on, she's on every show, and I think she produces a few of them herself, too. Hardworking uh, Joanna Jewelis, uh, media maven. And uh, her and her husband and her daughter all being honored prior to the start of the game. Of course, her daughter, uh, one of the senior cheerleaders. Belmont uh, marching band members were honored at halftime tonight. Actually see some, uh, some uh, special... Uh, I saw that Jeremy just zoomed in on the... Uh, the posters being held up by the uh, the cheerleaders who are uh, <laughs> standing on top of and risen up. Uh, I imagine those might be the seniors that are being uh, celebrated and uh, showing off the uh, the poster board. As we said, members of the high school marching band, those seniors also being honored uh, during halftime when they put on a great show. The Arlington player uh, being... Uh, Assisted off the field.
That might be number 22, Quinn Callahan, a sophomore. So let's see, they, uh, after the penalty, which I guess took place around the 10 yard line, ball's been moved back to the, um, to the 20. So uh, spot foul, a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the hold. Moves the ball back to the Arlington 20, first and 15 for Belmont at the 20 yard line. Jaden Arno still in there, a quarterback for Belmont, but now it's uh, Jaden Rodriguez is the running back that's flank to his left. Here's Arno back to throw. He's looking to the end zone and the pass looking for the senior. Ben William, it's incomplete. There was some tight coverage down there by uh, Jacob Kerbel, who we've mentioned uh, his name on offense for Arlington tonight. First time uh, we've brought his name up on the defensive side of the ball, but uh, as most receivers uh, do in high school, uh, they are uh, defensive backs uh, when you uh, flip the field over. So it'll be second and 15. Second and 15. Number 22, Tim Prinderville. Prinderville is a split to the near side right with uh, the senior co-captain Chris Cogliano in the slot to the near side. Jaden Rodriguez remains in the uh, game next to Jaden Arno's in the shotgun and now we're going to have a uh, timeout taken by Arlington. Timeout comes with nine minutes and 48 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter and Belmont in command leading 30 to 7. Again very happy you could join us part of BHS Sports TV's coverage of Marauder Middlesex League varsity football. I am Todd Bloniars being joined alongside uh, by Jeremy Meserve. Again, uh, Belmont always looking, uh, BMC is always looking for volunteers to be part of these sports productions. And if you'd like to be a volunteer, uh, you can email Julie DeStefano at access at belmontmedia.org or you can call the Belmont Media Center directly at 617-484-2443. Or better yet, you can just go to the Belmont Media Center located right in the heart of Waverly Square. Right across from the, uh, the, the big supermarket in town. They don't sponsor us, so I'm not gonna mention them by name, but you know which one I'm talking about. Right near the, uh, the commuter rail T-stop in the heart of Waverly Square. In the uh, yellow building with the big sign on Lexington Street. Just drop on in uh, during the week, during business hours. The staff would love to talk to you about being a volunteer for uh, future sports productions. Here's a uh, double fake and a handoff to Jaden Rodriguez. And uh, he gets it to down to the Arlington 10 yard line. Pickup of 10 yards on second and 15. They'll bring up third and five from the Arlington 10. Arno will remain in the shotgun. William and Cogliano, two of the five seniors, are split here to the near side, and now Cogliano will come in motion. Handoff again goes to Jaden Rodriguez, this time met at the line of scrimmage by a couple of spy ponders, and will be tackled for little to no gain. And that'll bring up fourth down. What will Brian McRae call here? It looks like the offense is staying on the field, so I guess Marauders are going to go for it here. Up 30-7 to seven with uh, under nine minutes to go. Not a whole lot lost here if the Marauders can't convert because you would keep Arlington pinned deep in their own territory. Handoff goes to Cogliano on the handoff, and Chris Cogliano, the senior, is in the end zone for a Marauder touchdown! Second touchdown of the night for the senior co-captain, Chris Cogliano. And the Marauders now lead 36 to seven with 8.39 to go. A little six yard touchdown run by Cogliano who was the man in motion. And it was a handoff by Jaden Arno to Cogliano. 
Those two have been a great combination this year. Not sure why, with 8.39 to go and Belmont about to kick an extra point, why Matt O'Loughlin would use a timeout here on a simple extra point, but uh, you see a score like this, all I can think of is that the coach wants to use up all his timeouts basically to keep the game going so he doesn't have an excuse to maybe try to take them later in the game. I mean, seriously, down 29 points and Belmont attempting a PAT and they decide to call an extra point, but it gives us more time to chat here, I guess. Rodgers actually decided to go for a two-point conversion. Maybe that's what the timeout was for. Is that uh, senior captain Asa Rosenmeyer doing his, uh, his I like to, I like to date myself a Refrigerator Perry impression. I don't know. <laughs> and Asa Refrigerator Rosenmeyer plunges forward for the successful two-point conversion. And that will increase the Belmont lead to 38 to seven with under eight and a half minutes to go here in the ball game. Well, you know, I, I think maybe after Arlington called that timeout, Brian McCray probably said, well, hey, it's senior night, right? Seniors are all having a good time here, right? Why not let Asa Rosemeyer, who's had a couple of those two-point conversions uh, earlier in the year, get an opportunity here in front of the home crowd at Harris Field? I know his dad, Peter, must be beaming with pride uh, seeing that plunge from Asa. And so Austin Lasseter to kick off. Not sure why the clock is running here. Uh, what is, uh, is there another high school rule I don't know about that you, you basically, the, it's running time. Uh, if, if you have a lead of 31 points in the fourth quarter, it might be, I don't know. Either that or the clock guy just forgot to turn the clock off. But here's a return up to the uh, up to the 35 yard line. What you say? What? <laughs> One of the fans here uh, just speculated that maybe because it's uh, it's getting late and cold. Well, you know what? It's not that late because we've had most of the other games have been starting at seven o'clock. This game started at six tonight, so a little bit earlier of a. Start to, but it also got dark earlier too, so that's. Yes, I, I will agree with that. It has been a very entertaining game for the Marauders here on Senior Night 2022. It's been all Belmont. Third consecutive game, Marauders have put up a 30 spot on their opponents and uh, will be leading to their third consecutive win and proving to four and three on the season and inching them closer and closer to the top 16 in the MIAA Division II power rankings which of course will get the Marauders into the playoffs that will start in two weeks hence. A great job by the Belmont High School Marching Band as always, led by band director Allison Lacasse. And here we are, just 11 days or 10 days from Halloween, and they are appropriately playing a little thriller for us. Well, this hasn't been much of a thriller tonight, and I think all the fans here at Harris Field rooting for the Marauders are very glad about that. There's a tackle for a loss made by number 19 of the Marauders. Let's break into this Marauder roster, shall we? Number 19, Thomas Dolan, a sophomore, as uh, Coach McCray emptying the bench out here, giving a chance for some of these underclassmen to get in and play, make their uh, presence felt here tonight as we're down under five and a half minutes to go. That'll be a tackle for a loss courtesy of Thomas Dolan, bringing up second and 13. Might have a change of quarterback here too for Arlington. Trying to see who that is, that's actually, it is a change. Number nine, ball pops in the air, almost intercepted. 
New quarterback for Arlington is number nine, Roshan Mandel, sophomore. Pass was deflected up in the air. Let's see who else the Marauders have out there defensively. I see number 25, Miles Torres. We already mentioned number 19, Thomas Dolan. Number 15, Wyatt Sclafani, sophomore. Number seven, Isaiah Zarsvalon. We may be seeing him at quarterback the next time the Marauders have the ball on offense. Number 32 out there on the field right now, that would be Billy Hendrickson, sophomore. It says William Hendrickson on my roster, but opening week I was told he goes by Billy, so Billy he will be. He's actually playing uh, deep safety here, uh, probably free safety. Second down, uh, third down, check that, and long handoff to Ethan Nelson, and he gets nothing. To paraphrase a quote from the old uh, movie uh, Caddyshack, you'll get nothing and you'll like it. That's at least what the Marauders are saying from a defensive standpoint. Uh, Ted Knight, acting legend, I'm telling you. All right, uh, it is fourth and 13. And the Spy Ponders are back in punt formation. And back deep, I believe that would probably be Torres, who was back on some of the earlier punts. When they turn to the side, it's always hard to pick up another high snap. Boy, those, those high snaps tonight for Arlington have just been uh, an occupational hazard. That's going to be downed at the 45-yard line of Belmont. No return, but great field position for Belmont. And uh, I see number seven, Isaiah Arsvalon, the villain. He goes back to the sideline. I'm kind of waiting to see if he's going out there to play quarterback, or are they going to... Jaden Arno's still over there. Is Arno going to run out, or what are they doing? Here goes, yep, Jaden Arno's night is done as he gives the ball to his fellow junior Ars Villain or Ars Villan. I'm going to keep saying it both ways just to make sure I have it covered. This way his parents will say I got it right half the time. First and 10 for Isaiah. Isaiah's at the Belmont 45. Multiple uh, guys in motion now they've set up and let's see, now we're gonna have uh, another, the, the snap is rolled to the quarterback and he'll have to fall forward. It's gonna be a tackle for a loss. So there's a new center in the game apparently and uh, Kind of went with the old ground ball to shortstop approach on the uh, on the snap from center. Jaden Rodriguez checks out. Alex Kalejo, senior Alex Kalejo, number nine, checking into the ball game. Kalejo, the uh, one of five Belmont seniors, uh, the uh, only one who's not a senior captain and is now into the ball game and getting some playing time. He's gonna get a carry here, and he uh, will gain about a yard. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a little more. Dragged down from behind by number 41, Ori Forrest of the Spy Ponders. The third and nine, and uh, with all this, the clock has run all the way down uh, I was going to say, it shows only one minute on the clock, but then again, I also don't think the clock has stopped either. Remember I, remember I was kind of speculating earlier, and I haven't looked at the clock in a few minutes. Now it says we're under a minute. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, the fourth quarter is moving along. Here's a pitch, and it goes back to Alex Kalejo. He's going to get positive yards. He's going to get a first down. It is senior night, and all the seniors get a chance to take a bow this evening. Alex Kalejo with a 10-yard run and a Marauder first down. Ball at the Arlington 44-yard line. I'm starting to wonder if the clock operator went home early tonight. I think the, I think the clock operator just punched out early. He said, I'm not going to stop the clock anymore. <laughs> oh, is there a slaughter rule in football? Yeah, the, clock, I have, the clock's been running continuously. Yes, the clock has been running continuously in the fourth quarter. I have no idea if there is a slaughter rule in football. In high school football, there might be. Again, there's been a lot of rule changes uh, by the MIA over the years. And in fact, 
The officials are taking the ball. That's it. Clock is at triple zero. Guess what? We did have running time in the fourth quarter, my friends. And this ball game is over. Senior night here at Harris Field is a wonderful night as the Belmont Marauders win their third straight fourth of the season. They improved to four and three overall, three and one in Liberty Division play with the final score tonight. Belmont 38 and Arlington seven. A great night for the Marauders who score 30 points, 30 plus points on offense for the third straight week. A touchdown run and pass from Jaden Arno, a pair of touchdowns, one receiving and one running for Chris Cogliano, a pair of touchdowns for junior running back Adrian Garung, one of them for 84 yards as he had another big game on the ground and the Marauders did just about everything right this evening in handing the Spy Ponders their fifth loss of the season and they now drop to 0-4 in Middlesex League Liberty Division play. With just one week remaining in the regular season, Marauders will head to Woburn next week with a chance to close out the regular season with a, perhaps a fourth straight win and fifth overall as they try to get themselves into the top 16 in the MIA Division II power rankings and a chance to play in the postseason. Keep your eye on the Belmont Media Center schedule, BHS Sports TV as far as upcoming Belmont Marauder games. I will tell you this much, we do have a game upcoming uh, at least one more broadcast. It will be Thanksgiving week when the Marauders and the Arlington Raiders square off for what may or may not be the 100th meeting. And then that game will be taking place at Fenway Park in Boston the day before Thanksgiving. We'll be happy to be bringing you that special broadcast. In the meantime, keep your eye on the BMC schedule for other upcoming games. Until then, for my cameraman and executive producer of BHS Sports TV, Jeremy Reserve, my name is Todd Bloniers. It's a good night. Wishing you a very good night here on Senior Night from Harris Field. Again, the final score, Belmont 38 and Arlington 7 Rodgers improving to 4-3 and three on the season. This has been a BHS Sports TV and BMC Sports Production.